Quickly moving on to the next speaker, we're going to be having the keynote speaker number two speaking on blockchain for government and smart cities. Blockchain for government and smart cities. And there is no other person that would do, do justice to that uh, but the uh, lead of BSV Blockchain for Government Initiative Middle East, BSV Blockchain, and that is in the persons of, person of Ahmed Yusuf. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take his, uh, his uh, prologue and then we're going to have him. Put your hands together for him as he comes up to the stage. You can see he's a very fine young man pushing the frontier of tech. Put your hands together for him. Come on, give him a Nigerian welcome again. Thank you. Amen. Ahmed Youssef, lead of BSV Blockchain for Government Initiative Middle East, BSV Blockchain. Ahmed Youssef has been working in the ICT industry for over 21 years, most of which has been on digital transformation products and services for the e-government. After a decade working in the U.S. government in a leadership role, he joined the Saudi government in 2015 in Saudi Arabia as a digital transformation leader and strategic head. Mr. Youssef is leading the blockchain for government initiative Middle East. As a digital transformation leader, he has led many blockchain and data-driven projects in the area of BI, AI, and ML, where he is able to deliver substantial strategic results. His strong operational focus based on data and customer digital experience is used to inform, plan, and enable the digital strategy. He is a proven cross-cultural, multinational executive with exceptional influencing skills. He is an innovator with a deep grasp of G2C and G2G technologies, data, and services both in the U.S. and abroad. With the Rouse Innovation, let's make welcome Ahmed Youssef. First of all, let me acknowledge something very exceptional. Only people that have been in the government business, working with government in the emerging the government, uh, uh, government and technology, they understand. There is two types of government leaders. One, the one that will sit and listen to you, but at the end of the conversation, will just forget about what you said and not implement anything. And there is another one will direct you to his team so you can make conversation with his team so they can take the journey. One thing I have noticed with Mr. DJ here, he's not any of those. I have been working with government for over 20 years. He's the person humbly will sit, listen, and take what you said and take the gloves and implement it himself. And this is unique and created. Yes, he deserved that. And from, from my personal opinion, those are the people who are actually drive the innovation. So my presentation is not going to be about him, of course. It's going to be about how you can use blockchain. And I'm going to give you a hack. There's three type of people in this room. Either you are government official or startups and people who want to innovate and people, smart people, they want to build something. They want to uh, use the technology so they can uh, innovate for the future. And there's the investors. So to give you a hack for the today, because there's a lot of presentation, a lot of information, I'm just going to be very brief and very quick, but you have to follow me in this categories. So I'm going to talk about two categories today. We already heard from investors. Investor will come, just like I mentioned in our uh, discussion, that there is always, always technology come from the garage, from the smart people who sit at home and bring ideas and build these ideas, and then the enterprise and the investor will take it and build something from it and start selling it, and then the government come here regulated. So today I'm gonna speak, so to understand your role here, either you are startups, smart person, want to learn about the technology, position yourself in this category, or you are a government leader, 
either one of those, you need to learn about blockchain so you can make the right decisions. As soon as you make the right decision for Nigeria, for Nigerian people, the investment will come. So everybody will hear Google or WhatsApp or uh, sorry, so, uh, Facebook or any other f uh, big tech around the world. You don't need to say much. If you say, I worked for Google or I worked for... Those are innovation driven by just people like yourself. So my hack to you, if you are a person with idea, today I'm going to just show you a quick way in how to integrate with the government. We're already building stuff. So without too much discussion, blockchain have a huge impact in our daily life. Smart cities for citizens that creating data. So you click, you share your location, you share your Uber or your information about your journey or you're accessing government services or you're making payments or using infrastructure. All of this use cases on the blockchain. And there's people talking about Researches, for example, one research has been done and a prototype that we have built in Saudi Arabia that for uh, a, a, a small gated community that we brought a traditional vehicle that put an IOT on it, this traditional vehicle changed that to an autonomous vehicle. So we have vehicle to vehicle communication, so two cars can talk to each other, communicate what's happening in the infrastructure, and then Vehicle to infrastructure communication. What does that mean? It means that if there is an accident or there's traffic or there is pothole or there is child in the ground uh, running, you will be able, the car will detect that information and response and act. So this is one of the very useful use cases for cities and for government that they can think, okay, blockchain could be in a massive scale adoptions. So we all know about the scales of the adoptions in the blockchain areas. But in general, this gated community has other things, other services that provided by government to citizens. That the security access is one of them, how to, uh, there is a gated, this gated community, there's a multiple cars come every day about 30, 40,000 and leave the, uh, that uh, uh, specific area to do services for, with the government. Uh, so the smart gates, putting their da data on the smart gate, accessing, having this data being uh, in, in, in the layer uh, of, of, of applications that the citizens or the driver understand what to do before they come. And also uh, tracking, as uh, DJ mentioned in, in, in his openings, that the data he has uh, one of the use cases is the tracking, to track cars, to track mobile phones, to track payments. And so before the person come to you, you know what service they are expecting and how much services they want in that certain area and, 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 and time. NFT and one of the things that people are talking about and how to use it for events like this or payments or location. This is another use cases. So, now we go into, um, so to accelerate the adoption with the enterprise level so that making this connection between the, uh, the, the citizens, the people who are trying to build something and the smart people who have always that uh, have these amazing ideas but they wanted to take it to the next level but they don't know how. Another very important thing is when we went to school, when we went to universities, they train us how to be a laborer. They teach us how to work for someone. But they have never actually taught us how to build our own business, how to build our own companies, how to bring the idea that we have and change the world with it. There's no school in the world teach that. But when people, visionary leaders, they have that aspect of vision, things will happen. So uh, having academic partnership with universities, academia, that they have this mindset, 
The leader forced the academia to build their accelerator programs in a way that actually takes simple idea from students or from a citizen and change it into a company and give him all the tools possible, as I will show in a minute what we are doing about that. That is the direction that will drive the innovation and will change the concept about the adoption of blockchain and help the digital, of Nigeria, the digital economy of Nigeria. Having events like this is also another aspect. We talked about uh, yesterday about what can we do to help uh, in, 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 in uh, driving this uh, enterprise adoption in a blockchain. So, multiple things that is, has been already been discussed, and you're going to see a lot of prototype and products that is actually in the market being built, but we want to see more of this coming out of Nigeria, coming out of Africa. But the, the way to do this is to actually help build, help, help build massive innovation center, innovation labs that could bring the idea forward. So recently, we are humbled and pleased by a visit of Mr. DJ in Saudi Arabia in the Innovation Center that he built to solve and answer the question I have been asking in the beginning of this conversation. It's actually how to bridge this gap, government and innovators, the people who are actually want to build things away from investors will come no matter what. If you are building something nice, if you are working hard, things will happen. So the innovation actually requires visionary leaders to make decisions and put things into actions. And in order to do this, because you can't come to Mr. DJ in his office and say, okay, I have a drone company that I want to build right now, how can you help? And if you get the chance to do that, the next person will not have this amazing idea about I want to invent as, as something related to Metaverse or Web3 or a generative art platform. So the, reason, the way to do that, to open a massive accelerator centers that where people can sit and play and partner with universities, partner with uh, uh, VCs and uh, venture studios so they can provide the tools to the smart people who are sitting there, they wanted to build something but they don't know how. And the only way is the traditional way, you have to sit and study and four year, finish your four-year program in the university and then go work for a company and if you're lucky to get hired by those companies and at the end of the day what you're gonna do you just be waiting for your salary every month so my take home message to you startup leaders and to you government leaders is to build centers like this so people could have the mindset from day one especially like our uh, uh, MC just mentioned that those are a digitally native they can change the world they can change Nigeria by start building their own companies. And so they don't have to live and work in Europe or the US. They can build the stuff from here and ship it to the world. Thank you very much. <laughs>